Good morning, everyone. Hi, hello. My name is EJ, and I am back again with another narrated art time lapse video for us to take a look at and hopefully learn a thing or two from. So, yeah, I do this narrated art time lapse every now and then. I don't do this often enough uh, simply because of time constraints. But for this particular one, I wanted to make an exception simply because this is such a unique thing to happen. Um, right now, we're taking a look at me doing a 2D painting in a 3D software. So pretty unique, pretty non-standard behavior, honestly. Quite honestly, this is not something that most people would do. They typically don't go to Blender to do their 2D painting. They go to their 2D painting software. But for this one, for this particular day, uh, which was December 26, 2024. <laughs> I knew exactly what day it was. It was the day after Christmas last year. Sorry, not 2024, 2023. Um, I woke up the day after Christmas just craving to do this. I don't know what compelled me to do it. I don't know where the inspiration came from. It just came to me early in the morning. And I said, I'm going to do it. And so that's what we're taking a look at right now is me doing this 2D painting on a 3D software. So very unique situation, of course. Anyways, let's talk real quick about the setup, uh, which is what has happened in the past two minutes. When I first initially started this particular project, I went to sculpt paint, right? Because I've been doing a lot of vertex painting lately. It's been my jam for the past year or two uh, i haven't really touched any of the texturing tools i just go straight to sculpt paint which is basically vertex painting and so yeah initially that's what i went for um so i open up a plane or not open i added a plane mesh uh subdivided it to a good uh resolution and then started sculpt painting and then right before I got too deep into my painting I was like hey why not practice with Blender's regular texturing tools and so I decided I was going to do that right I opened up a not open I decided to I think did I delete I don't remember <laughs> what the video showed but I basically just ended up doing another plane if I'm not wrong and then going straight to texture painting mode um, but I was having issues with the texturing tools uh, it, w it felt slow from what I remember and this was a while back obviously this was about four or five months ago and from what I remember, I had issues with speed. And so I was like, you know what? Let me just go with my original uh, intention, which was to use skull paint. And so I ditched that whole texture painting um, plan and then just re added another plane, subdivided that, and then just went to town with it. So this is basically where I'm at right now. Um, as soon as I had a good enough resolution, obviously I laid down the background first. Um, and before I get too deep into the narrating what's going on, what I'm working on is a photo study of Ivan Samkov's very, very wonderful photograph of a ballerina. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, so yeah, in the original photo, there was a staircase behind the ballerina. And then, of course, there's the light being cast on the floor, which I thought was a really, really good contrast to the ballerina. And that's the reason why I included it in the painting. Um, my end result ended up cropping a lot of that out just because it felt like it wasn't as effective. Um, I guess without the stairs, the whole painting just wasn't as strong visually as I thought it would have been. So I ended up cropping out a lot of that light cast or that light that was cast by the window on the floor i cropped a lot of that out and really just zoomed in on the ballerina it was what i ended up happening but um for my painting right i decided to just crop out 
the staircase. So when I laid down my background, it's just all plain blue. I was basically playing with the idea of an infinite background, which is pretty much just what I laid down. It felt like an infinite background behind a ballerina, right? And then of course you have the cast light and then the ballerina itself. So I laid out the shapes for all those major areas, right? The background, the cast light, and of course the ballerina. And as soon as I had my shapes down, that's when I basically started doing this whole shape carving thing. Um, it's a good, nice little technique where instead of starting out with a line sketch, you just start out with blocks of shapes, of the general idea of what you wanted to paint, and then just slowly start adding details on that block. Um, you carve out the block, taking out parts that you don't like, and then obviously adding parts that you do like. And so yeah, it's a nice way of painting. Uh, it's very, very effective, especially if you're doing a photo study. It speeds up the whole process a lot. Uh, when you're concepting, uh, for me personally, I don't find it quite as effective in a way. Unless I'm trying to iterate like a lot of ideas. If I, ha if I needed to iterate a lot of ideas, then yeah, this is definitely the best way of doing it. Where you just do shape language just do a bunch of shapes and do shape exercises to just come up with the best shape uh, for something and then you start out your sketch right um, especially for conceptual ideas or or if you don't have any ideas at all to begin with me on the other hand though I typically get like idea visually right off the bat as soon as I hear a prompt or two, some of those visual ideas I get isn't almost all, isn't really the best, but some of them are, I know will just work like visually. Um, it might not, I might not execute it properly, you know, but the idea behind it can be very visually strong in my head that typically I just go straight for a nice sketch. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, my whole point in going off in this whole sketch slash, um, slash shape thing is simply because I typically do s sketches, right? You know, for a good period, like a year or two, I was doing the whole shape thing, you know, because I saw a lot of people doing that. Uh, I would, would go through YouTube videos and whatnot and I see a lot of concept artists that's the way they would work. They would start out with shapes and then just slowly carve their way into a painting. And I thought it was such an interesting process because when I grew up or when I was learning art, you know, I was your traditional artist. I would always start with a line sketch and just fill it in, right? I'd never really start out with blocks of shapes. Um, and I was like that for the longest time. And so I decided to experiment with the whole shape thing and it helped me a lot uh, with my artwork. It let me be a lot looser. It let me become more effective. Uh, it speeded up my workflow. So I absolutely, absolutely love it. You know, so for like maybe a year or two or maybe even longer than that, maybe even three or four years. Um, I think that started around maybe 2017, 2018. I'm not quite sure when exactly did I start doing just um starting out with shapes right maybe around that time but yeah i think up until 2020 2021 i was always just doing that and i was always just starting out with shapes and then just doing all my paintings like that way but then at some point maybe 2022 or something to that effect i went back to doing sketches and i miss it uh, you know, I just I just miss a good, nice, clean sketch. <laughs> so um, nowadays, I find myself doing that. I would do a rough sketch of whatever visual idea I had in my head, and then I would do a clean sketch, nice, clean line sketch right after that, and then I would start out uh, with my painting after that. So yeah, very rarely do I do the whole uh, blocking out of shapes thing now. Um, 
But anyways, in Blender, right, and, and the reason why I went into this whole subject about shapes and line sketch and whatnot, um, I didn't have the luxury of copy and paste like I do with 2D painting softwares. When I'm doing my line sketches, right, and when I'm doing a lot of my editing, um, Sometimes I just do my traditional just erase and resketch if I make a mistake. But sometimes it helps a lot if you have that option for copy and paste, especially when you're dealing with proportions, right? When you're doing like the human form and you're making sure that the left arm is as long as the right arm and all this stuff, you know, half the time it's a lot quicker if you just do copy and paste, you know, you just do, you just grab your polygonal tool, lasso tool or any of your lasso tools, right? You know, make your, um, you mark out your section that you want to copy, click copy, and then paste it on the other side, flip it if you need to. But you have that luxury when you're working in a 2D painting software. You don't really have that luxury in, in a 3D software like Blender. And so that's the reason why I knew that I was going to have to do the whole um, start out with shapes and shape carving and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's what I depended on. Because I knew that I wasn't going to have that ability to just copy and paste. Um, yeah, it's just one of the limitations of working in Blender, I guess. So it was super, super refreshing that I was faced with that, you know, technical issue of not having the ability to copy and paste. Because then it just brought back this old technique that I used to do. Which was nice that I got the chance to practice it because I don't practice it often enough, you know. Maybe I should make it a point to, you know, every at least once a month or two, you know, do an exercise where I start out with a shape instead of a sketch and just work my way into a painting from that, you know. Something for me to seriously think about because this was really, really fun. No lie. I mean... I thought that starting out with those shapes and then just slowly painting my way into this wonderful painting was really, really awesome. And it, of course it helped that I was doing a photo study. If I, if I was doing this straight from imagination, I would be having a lot harder time with coming up with the image, honestly, with, especially without that clean line sketch. like. I, this would have been a super struggle, but since this was just a photo study and I have a photo reference to refer to, it was just, just straight up, just like looking over another monitor, looking at the photo and then just, you know, painting what I see basically. So yeah, but anyways, yeah, this is what I'm doing right now is just slowly adding details to this, to the shape of the ballerina. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead. And let you guys watch this show for now. Uh, just enjoy me just detailing this little piece. I'm going to come back later on in the video to give my final thoughts about this particular painting. So, yeah, enjoy the show for now. <music>
All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk some more about this piece. Uh, I'm going to go back and yeah, just talk about my overall emotions and and critique of this particular artwork. Um, before I do that, though, I wanted to make note about the ball the ballerina's feet. Um, so I went off on the whole sketch, not doing the sketch, doing shapes, yeah, no. Um, and then if you guys notice, but I actually did an outline of the feet because I realized that my initial shape of the feet was very, very off proportionally. So I felt compelled to re-sketch it out with an actual sketch. And so I did, I sketched it out. Uh, just to kind of give me an idea of where things are. And then obviously after that, I painted over it and yeah, detailed it out, which is what we're taking a look at right now. It's me detailing the feet. Um, so yeah, anyways, I, I don't really have that much of a critique about this particular artwork simply because it's a photo study. Um, if it was my own artwork based off of imagination, I could go off and a critique about that. Um, easily you know i could talk about the successes and what worked and what did not work and all that stuff for this one i couldn't really do that uh simply because the photo compositionally was very very strong if you guys get the chance take a look at ivan samkov's photo of this ballerina the setting of the photograph is very very awesome it's just uh, I wanted to use the word austere, but I don't think that's quite the right word to use in this particular scenario. So let's just, you know, simplify my thought pattern by saying that it was just awesome composition wise. Um, the stairs, uh, the cast light on the floor, the ballerina, they all work compositionally well in the original photo. Um, I didn't do a good justice of the photo with my drawing because I cut out the the staircase at the back I thought that the infinite background would you know make for an interesting uh, contrast you know especially since there's a cast there's a cast light on the floor right and if there's an infinite background in the background it, it kind of leads this whole questioning in your head like where's that light coming from if there's no walls and if there's no roof <laughs> who's where's the light coming from in a way you know so i thought originally that cutting out the staircase and providing an infinite background would prove to be interesting but no it just made the whole painting so empty so yeah now that the painting is done i realized that really i should have left the staircase in there it would have proved to be far far more interesting but anyways i ended up with this piece which is still just as effective uh though it's not as super effective as the original photo is so so yeah that's all i could think of as my critique anyways this is the end of the video thank you guys for watching it with me i hope you learned a thing or two from it I'll see you guys in the next video. Good night.